Hi guys, welcome back to Linside Two Hundred One. Today we are going to begin a new set.、Uh, we are going to talk about psycholinguistics. Specifically, we are going to talk about language acquisition. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about a, a very important hypothesis, which called called critical period hypothesis. Okay. This is a very important. Uh, it is a well assumed hypothesis in language acquisition. Okay. This hypothesis is proposed by Eric Lindberg, who is a neurologist. His assumption on language acquisition is this: language capacity can be explained by can be explained. On the basics of biological properties, and he proposed critical period hypothesis, which is that there exists a developmental period between infancy and puberty, during which a child can acquire language with fluency of a native speaker. Okay. So, in other words, there is a specific period of time in which a child will learn his first language. Okay, and here are some property of the critical period. It occurs early in development. Okay, and the period and the period of time is brief. And this is the period of time we have the peak plasticity in our brain. In other words, everything in our brain is much more flexible. Yeah, so we can learn, learn new stuff easily. Okay, and there is a a prop end of this period of time, and the depression, deprivation. The deprivation of language input during this of time has a permanent, irreversible effects. Okay, so actually,、uh, this point will be very important to test this、uh, this hypothesis. We can think about what prediction would this critical period hypothesis made. Okay. Make okay, so、um, it predicts that if there is a child who cannot have language input during this period of time, then this unfortunate child will not have any language at all, no matter how hard he try, he tries, right? So.、Um, There are several case studies which can support critical period hypothesis. Of course, we cannot really do conduct any experiment to test this hypothesis, right? We cannot isolate a child、uh, intentionally. No, this is not the right way. Okay, but、um, there are just some. Unfortunately, unfortunate, unfortunate cases that we can study, in which, accidentally support、uh, this hypothesis. So we are going to talk about these three cases one by one. Okay, the first case is Victor. Okay, Victor is found、uh, in seventeen ninety seven. In France, and when when he was found, he is estimated to be about twelve years old, because we cannot know、uh, his real age at that time. Okay, and he has no speech; he has a unusual food preferences, and with many scars on his skin. And then at that time, there's a an idea that. Um, the ability to learn language 
distinguishes a man from animal. Okay. Yeah, and Victor is a a uh, test case for this idea. Okay. And when he was found, um, a physician adopted him, and this physician tried to teach him um, empathy and language. But Victor learned little language, yeah, and he has some signs of autism. Okay. Okay. So actually, Victor's case supports supports the critical period hypothesis because he has no language input during his critical period and he has no language okay okay now let's talk about the second case which is which is about genie okay uh, you can click on this link to see a very nice documentary video of genie okay when genie was found she was 13 years old okay and this is very interesting in the sense that when Ginny was found it was the period of time where when the critical period hypothesis was dominant so naturally her case become a test case for the hypothesis and one of our uh, textbook authors Victoria Franking um, is the head of the research team to do research on Gini. Okay. And there are some interesting development of Gini's language. Okay. Her language learning was not even. Okay. What do we mean by not even? Okay. So her phonology is okay, and there are some, I mean, after some training, her phonology is okay. She can uh, produce every English sounds, okay? Um, about the morphology of semantic development, this is kind of interesting, okay? Her production and comprehension of words increased rapidly so at a period of time she is in her developing stage of two word stage okay two word stage means that in each utterance a child only produce two words okay or two morphemes however um she had a very large uh lexicon large vocabulary in her head already so um, actually uh, this is relevant as well so normally normally for two for kids in his or her two world stage they are only mastering for about 50 words but genie already have uh, 200 words okay and for Jeannie's syntax, okay, she has no function, functional elements. We learn about what is function words and content words in morphology, right? So she has a, a, a very a te telegraphic speech, just left out all the function words, okay? Yeah, and he is, she is able to master 200 words. Okay, and she's able to have some complex constructions as well, relative clauses. Okay, so actually, Gina, a uh, Gini's case just partially support the critical period hypothesis. Gini can still uh, have some language. Okay, now it's the final case study. We have Isabella. Okay, she was discovered living in a 
darkened room with her deaf, deaf, mute mother as her only contact, and she had been deprived of learning how to speak because her mother cannot speak. She is、uh, both deaf and mute. Okay, and when she was found, she was six year old. You know, Jenny was found at age thirteen. Okay, and when she when Isabel is found, she has no she had no language, and her cognitive development was below that of a normal normal two year two year old. However,、uh, after some training, within one to two years of rehabilitation, rehabilitation,、um, she is fully recovered. She learned to speak at a level of her seven-year, seven-year-old peers. Okay, and her IQ test, her IQ test, was normal. Okay, so there,、um, there. Here are some questions about the critical period hypothesis. Okay, why did Victor and Jenny not progress to full knowledge of language while Isabella did? Okay,、um, the best guess is that because Isabella was found at six. Which is much younger than Victor and Jenny, right? So、um, we can say that maybe when Isabella was found, her critical period was not ended yet. However, for Victor and Jenny, it was it was too late. Okay.、Um, there is a very、uh, plausible factor. Relevant factor as well.、Um, when Victor and Jenny was found, before G- Victor and Jenny was found, they are alone, alone by by themselves. They have, they do not have any company. On the other hand, Isabella has a constant contact, which is her mother. Okay. So we can think about that language. Language needs companies. Okay. So when、uh, Isabella tried to communicate with her mother, they have some special gesture system. And actually, this、um, gesture system may help her to understand and learn that. The relationship between object and symbol, and which is critical for for language acquisition. Okay. So in today's lecture, we、uh, learned about the concept of critical period, and we talk about three cases. Okay. Thank you, and see you next time. Remember to do the in class exercise.